so I'm all gessoed and dry, sort of kind of dry, it's still a little bit damp in spots, but I am too impatient to uh, wait, so here we go, I'm just going to get out some of my uh, new Distress inks, they're the Spring Collection, I believe, and I especially like these two together, so... I think I'll probably just use these, and I'm going to try a technique that I saw on um, ScrapTime.ca with Christine, where she um, actually, see if it works on a gessoed page, because uh, she was working on a watercolor paper, so we'll see. I just did this, and then took her sponge and spread it around, and it seems to work. Ooh, look at that. Look at the way it absorbs in some spots and not in others because of the varying layers of gesso. Very cool. reactive, apparently, <coughs> you can just lay your stencil down and spray with plain water and get a sort of a stencil effect. So this is just plain water. like much yet, but I can see that it's starting to react. Very cool. layer, I think I'm going to um, try an image transfer with this, um, it is, I believe, Chinese text from a book that I bought when I was in Hong Kong. I have not tried to transfer this, so let me see what happens. I got a, not a bad result from the water distress ink technique. It's kind of cool. Okay. So, I like to tear away the parts of the paper that don't have much on it. I'm using regular gel matte medium, which seems to give me the best results. Although any um, golden product seems to work.
give it a really good burnish just so that it, every part of the text is attached. gel medium on the back of the paper. It prevents it from transferring. It actually sandwiches it between the gel medium and the paper. Oh yeah. Not bad. Just maybe not quite long enough because some of it's coming out, but not bad. For layer number four, I think I'll try some uh, stickers. to um, use some pan pastels again, um, along with a uh, mask. This is a mask that I made. <laughs> 